Welcome to Pediatric Secret YouTube channel. We will discuss today the examination of the pediatric cardiovascular system. A standardized approach to the physical exam will be presented here. As you go through your exam, be sure to keep in mind the child age, development and disposition. And to interpret finding accordingly. Evaluation begins with the acute assessment of the child. Begin with an assessment of the ABC. And if the child is unwell, it may be necessary to address acute problems prior to obtaining a history and physical examination. Observe the child for any signs of distress. This may include pallor, sweating, cyanosis, or increased work of breathing. Observe the level of the activity in the patient. Do they appear comfortable? Are they interacting in an appropriate manner with you and their parents? A well taken pediatric history is an essential beginning to a cardiovascular assessment. Begin with the general health of the child, including feeding difficulties, growth delay, and decreased exercise tolerance. In the older child, ask the parent to compare the child to peers of the same age can help in this assessment. symptoms that can indicate cardiovascular disease may include period of cyanosis, sweating, shortness of breath, palpitation, and edema, also chest pain and syncope. Squatting after exercise can indicate congenital cardiac defect such as petrology of fallot. Sure to inquire about the prenatal period, exposure to medications or drugs such as lithium, pentoin, and alcohol can be associated with cardiac lesions. History of maternal illness such as systemic lupus, diabetes, or primary rubella should be indicated. Children that were born prematurely are at increased risk of having a patent ductus arteriosum. Don't forget the family history. This obtain relieves the presence of other family members with congenital heart defects or early onset cardiovascular disease. Always ask this question to the parent. Are you related to each other? Before starting any physical exam, ensure that your hands are probably washed. Observe the body habitat, noting any dysmorphic features that may indicate a syndrome associated with congenital heart disease. Common examples would include trisomy 21, Dijorg, and Turner syndrome. You should take a complete set of vital signs, including heart rate, respiratory rate, blood pressure, height, weight, and for the children under 5 years of age, head circumference. If the heart rate is regular, count the beats over 15 seconds and multiply by 4. Ideally, the blood pressure should be taken in all 4 limbs. Be sure to plot the growth on an age-appropriate chart. Examine the hands and feet. Note the presence of clubbing, splinter hemorrhage, or any other abnormalities of the nail. Assess for clubbing by asking the child to hold the two index finger together and looking at lobby bone angle. Check the capillary refill. A normal refill is less than two seconds. Cardiac abnormalities normally manifest as respiratory distress. Look for signs of increased work 
of freezing such as tachypnea, intercostal embrowing, tracheal tug, head popping, and nasal flaring. Abdominal freezing is normal in the neonate, but not in the older child. Your attention to the child face. Look at the eye for sclera extra or balor. Next, look inside the mouth for signs of central cyanosis. Examine the mucous membrane to assess the volume status of the patient. Assessment of the jugular vein of pressure is not routinely performed in the pediatric patient under 8 years of age. Also, it is applicable to older adolescents and young adult patients. Inspection of the chest. Is it normally shaped? Is there any precordial bulge? Not for any skeletal deformity. Not for any scars. Look for the visible cardiac impulse. This is often seen in the normal child, especially one who is thin or in higher output states such as fever. The radial, brachial, and the femoral pulse should be assessed for rate, place, volume, and contour. Assessment of the femoral pulse is, is extremely important and shouldn't be overlooked. Once the femoral pulse is found, use your other hand to palpate the brachial pulse and assess for brachial femoral delay which may indicate coarctation of the aorta. Check peripheral circulation by filling the dorsalis pedis and the posterior tibial pulse. Use the bed of your finger to fill the apex teeth. In the children older than 7, this is usually found in the fifth intercostal space in the midclavicular line. Division away from this may indicate right left or generalized ventricular enlargement. If the apical beat is difficult, ask the child to roll over onto their left side and breathe out. The cardiac impulse should be felt as a tap, while a heave is felt as a forceful lift. The rail caused by turbulent flow are first palpated, are first palpated through boom. Use the ball of your hands and press firmly down in the older child and the tip of your finger in younger children. Palpate all four oscultatory areas. Palpation of the liver can give an indication of the right side heart function. Backup of the flow on the right side can quickly cause engorgement of the liver. In general, the normal liver may be felt up to 2 cm below the costal margin because the liver span and if hepatomegal is present, splenic enlargement should be determined. It's not always abnormal to be able to feel the spleen tip in children. However, a spleen tip that is more than 2 cm below the, the rib margin is indicative of an enlarged spleen. Assess for dependent edema in the limbs and sacral area. Often the best assessment of if edema is present is by asking the child parents if they think the child appear edematous or puffy. Finally, auscultation. Before beginning, let's review the area of cardiac auscultation. Each of these space has a traditional valvular name. But it is important to remember that murmurs of more than one origin may be heard in a given area. The first area in the second right intercostal space next to the sternum, this is the aortic area. The second intercostal space to the left of the sternum is described as pulmonic area. The lower left sternal border is known as a tricuspid area and the apex is described as the mitral area. Be sure to listen to the back, the murmur of 
aortic coarctation is sometimes only found here. Listen at each of these spaces with both the bill and the diaphragm of the stethoscope. The, the diaphragm picks up high pitched sounds such as pericardial rub, first sound and second sound, as well as most murmur. The bill plays lightly on the chest, works best for hearing low pitched sounds such as gallop or for test hearing of the second sound split. The second sound should be widest split at the end of inspiration. Hearing and interpreting all of these sounds take significant time and practice in pediatrics. Go slowly and listen carefully. If a murmur is heard, listen for the timing in the cardiac cycle, volume and radiation. Determine at which area the murmur is loudest and then listen for radiation at all of the other area, including both the axilla and the back. Lastly, listen to the lung. If there are crepitations, this may be a late sign of pulmonary congestion, secondary to congestive heart failure. This concludes the cardiac examination in pediatric patients. Remember that, like with all physical exams, becoming competent as the cardiac evaluation takes time. Thank you for your listening and your attention, and we will meet in the next video.